this is the structure of elementary kennel digestive system it starts from mouth ends in ears this elementary kennel is having different parts about the parts and their locality they can make many neat questions mouth leads into buccal cavity with the help of teeth and a tongue the introduced food is grinded and it becomes a semi solid paste named bolus after digestion in buccal cavity the food is sent to be bolus and that bolus enters into the next part of elementary kennel that is pharynx that is pharynx but the pharynx is having three distinct parts those three distinct parts are nasopharynx which is connected to the nasal cavity oropharynx which is connected to oral cavity laryngopharynx which is connect to connected to larynx a voice box a part of respiratory system voice box in which the vocal cords are there where do you find vocal cords they are in larynx and they produce the sound nasopharynx oropharynx and the laryngopharynx are the three distinct parts of pharynx based on which part they are connected nasopharynx is connected to nasal cavity oropharynx is connected to oral cavity laryngopharynx is connected to larynx and now the bolus which comes through the pharynx and enters into a next long tube named esophagus it's a tube and esophagus is a part which is there in the thoracic cavity of our body already you know our body is body cavity is divided into two parts upper thoracic cavity lower abdominal cavity in between them there is a partition that partition is named as diaphragm that partition is named as diaphragm they may make the neat question which of the following part of elementary canal is present in the thoracic cavity that is esophagus that is the part of digestive system which is present in thoracic cavity that is esophagus as well they may ask another thing which of the following parts of digestive system which give passage to the food but no digestion in them they just give the passage to the food two parts one is pharynx other is esophagus they just give the passage to the food no digestion at all this is another question a neat question which of the following parts give the passage to the food but no digestion pharynx and esophagus one more neat question can be made that is which of the following part is a common passage for air and food which of the following part is a common passage for air and food that is pharynx air from the nasal cavity comes to pharynx food from the oral cavity comes to pharynx and pharynx is a common passage for air and food 
and now this esophagus leads into a gastric stomach it is a stomach and the stomach is having three distinct parts a dome shaped fundus or fundic and the part where esophagus is connected is cardiac and the last part is pyloric fundic cardiac and a pyloric and they may make need to question esophagus is connected to the stomach at which of the following parts fundic cardiac and pyloric is connected to the cardiac then this gastric stomach is a second site for digestion the first site for digestion is buccal cavity and this is the second site for digestion in its lining innumerable number of very minute glands are there those are named as gastric glands these gastric glands are present in the inner lining of stomach and they produce a digestive juice that is gastric juice gastric juice and one more interesting thing even they may ask the question between esophagus at the junction between esophagus and stomach there is a valvular door at the junction between esophagus and the stomach there is a valvular door that valvular door is said to be gastro esophageal sphincter sphincter that is there here it's a valvular door what it does it opens whenever the food comes to esophagus it opens and the food will come to stomach as soon as food enters from esophagus to stomach it closes it does not allow food from stomach to go back to esophagus but at the time of omitting it happens but we will be having very tough time at the time of omitting because the content of stomach has to come to esophagus and go out through the mouth during that you know this sphincter gastro esophageal sphincter has to bend backward it's very difficult task that's why at the time of omitting we'll have tough time and this is gastro esophageal sphincter sphincter is a valvular door after digestion in the stomach that food after digestion of food in the stomach is said to be chyme now this chyme enters into duodenum that chyme enters into duodenum and here there is a another valvular door between pyloric stomach and duodenum this valvular door is named as is named as pyloric sphincter pyloric sphincter even it helps for unidirectional flow of food from stomach to duodenum stomach to duodenum and it come to duodenum that food comes to duodenum and one more thing concerned to that stomach you should remember 
stomach resembles a english letter z z that stomach looks like a alphabet z and now the food enters into duodenum at the junction between stomach and duodenum two more glands are in their connection when the food comes to duodenum what is that duodenum is the first part of small intestine as far as small intestine it is distinguished into three parts those three parts are u shaped duodenum and highly coiled jejunum and uncoiled ileum u shaped duodenum highly coiled jejunum and uncoiled ileum that duodenum jejunum and ileum together named as small intestine small intestine remember the final site for digestion is duodenum this is the final site after duodenum there would be no digestion as far as digestion is concerned there are three sites for digestion first one buccal cavity second one gastric stomach third one duodenum a first part of small intestine and to this duodenum two associated glands are there those two associated glands are one is liver another is pancreas one is liver and another is pancreas liver produces bile a pigment named bile passes through the bile duct and the pancreas produces a digestive juice that is pancreatic juice that passes through pancreatic duct pancreatic duct and one more question they can ask remember pancreatic juice from pancreas passes through pancreatic duct bile from the liver passes through bile duct but the bile duct and the pancreatic duct never join to duodenum separately but they join by joining each other they make the common tube then that common tube opens into duodenum what is that pancreatic duct plus bile duct together form a common duct duct named hepatico pancreatic duct hepatico pancreatic duct bile duct and the pancreatic duct never open directly to the duodenum before they open into duodenum they join pancreatic duct and the bile duct join to form a common tube named hepatico pancreatic duct that opens into duodenum here also at the junction between hepatico pancreatic duct and duodenum there is a sphincter that sphincter is said to be a sphincter of audi sphincter of audi you have come across the three sphincters so far gastroesophageal sphincter valvular door is present between esophagus and stomach pyloric sphincter is present between pyloric stomach and duodenum and the sphincter of audi 
is present between hepatico pancreatic duct and duodenum hepatico pancreatic duct and duodenum remember concern to the position of these sphincters they can make innate questions and now here we will come across that bile directly may come through bile duct even it may be stored in a sac like structure named gallbladder gallbladder about the extra information concern to liver and pancreas we can discuss while discussing about digestive glands and now the food comes to duodenum that is chyme from the stomach even uh, bile from the liver comes here and pancreatic juice from pancreas is also come to the duodenum only and remember in the lining of duodenum in this duodenum lining another group of glands are there those are intestinal glands intestinal glands in duodenum or these are otherwise said to be crypts of liver cow crypts of liver cow intestinal glands which are there in duodenum otherwise said to be crypts of liver cow and these intestinal glands secrete intestinal juice see this duodenum is a final site for digestion food from stomach has come to duodenum bile from liver has come pancreatic juice from pancreas has come even intestinal juice from intestinal glands is also there so that in duodenum there would be a joining of bile from liver pancreatic juice from pancreas and intestinal juice from duodenum you may generally name this duodenum as a kudala sangama of our digestive system a kudala sangam of digestive system is a general term they may not ask as a neat question but here three juices have joined and this is the final site after digestion both the digested and undigested food enter into jejunum and ileum portion in the jejunum and ileum portion the digested food is absorbed and undigested food from ileum enters into large intestine enters into large intestine and here also there is a sphincter that sphincter is there between ileum last part of small intestine cecum of first part of large intestine that sphincter is said to be ileo cecal sphincter there are four sphincters this is fourth one ileo cecal sphincter it helps for the flow of that undigested food into the large intestine but not the back flow that ileo it is there between ileum and cecum and it enters into large intestine and this large intestine is distinguished into three parts the first sac like part named cecum tubular part named colon and the last part is named rectum sac like 
cecum, tubular, colon, and a last part, rectum. These three together named as large intestine. And cecum is the first part of large intestine. It is the place where symbiotic bacteria are present. They may make a neat question in which of the following part of large intestine symbiotic bacteria are present. Cecum, a sac like structure. That's all. And that tube like part is named as colon. And this colon is distinguished into three parts. One is ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon. Ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, these three together named as colon. And now colon leads into the last part named rectum, where the undigested food in the name of feces is stored and through the opening named anus this feces is removed out by the process named defecation defecation and at the junction between ileum and cecum there is one vermiform outgrowth named appendix appendix this outgrowth a worm like outgrowth is named as appendix remember appendix is a vestigial organ in our body vestigial organ in our body vestigial organ means it had the function in ancient man but now it has lost the function it is believed that in ancient man when he used to eat uncooked food this appendix used to produce the enzyme meant for the digestion of cellulose and that the enzyme is cellulase once in the need the question was asked which of the following enzyme is or was used to produce in appendix cellulase but now appendix is not producing cellulase hence there is no cellulose digestion in digestive system of humans because cellulase enzyme is absent because appendix is vestigial organ and then this is totally elementary canal or digestive system even this elementary canal is otherwise said to be gastro intestinal tract why the elementary canal is said to be gastrointestinal tract that is because two main parts in the digestive system are gastric stomach and intestine including small and large intestine the main parts of digestive system are gastric stomach and intestine hence the name gastrointestinal tract gastrointestinal tract okay this you have to remember and uh, there are five groups of glands associated with the digestion one group of glands named the salivary glands in the buccal cavity gastric glands in stomach liver pancreas and intestinal glands in the duodenum our work is to discuss about those glands and their secretions.